The Big Whack presents Buffalo on the Rise, sponsored by Dr. Kaplansky Dental Implants. Get new permanent teeth in 24 hours with our exclusive Teeth Now process. Welcome to the television show devoted to local business, Buffalo on the Rise, with your host, Joe Chili. There's an entrepreneurial spirit in Western New York that's putting our area on the cusp of greatness. Each week, Buffalo on the Rise features local business leaders and decision makers who are shaping our future. If it's about local business, we'll talk about it right here, right now, during Buffalo on the Rise. I'm Joe Chili. On this edition of The Big Whack Presents Buffalo on the Rise, do you cover your mouth embarrassed about your teeth? Let Dr. Kaplansky make your holiday smile bright. Looking to get away at this time of the year? Elizabeth Carey from the AAA of Western and Central New York has some travel tips. Then, are you gearing up to get a new bike for the new year? Tom's Pro Bike is here to get you rolling. All on this edition of The Big Whack Presents Buffalo on the Rise. I'm Joe Chilly. You can listen to me mornings on the Big Wack. Joining us today on the Big Wack's Buffalo on the Rise is Dr. Kaplansky. Uh, doctor, I, I look at some of the certifications here. I look after your name and it looks like the alphabet, you know, with all, <laughs> all the different things. But uh, board certified in implant dentistry, diplomat of the American Board of uh, Oral Implantology. What is it to be a diplomat? What does that exactly mean? It was uh, a lot of hard work, Joe, so Is to it? get to that point, yes, absolutely. So to become a diplomat of the board, um, you have to not only perform thousands of implant surgeries, you have to uh, take countless uh, hours of continuing education, you have to pass a rigorous three-hour written test, and you have to present seven cases, I believe, uh, your seven surgeries to the board and defend them in front of uh, people. So it's an oral exam that you have to take. It's, it's a little bit too much of an examination, I think, for me. But, uh, and I'm sure all of these things are costly as well. It's something that you have to prepare for. I will tell you the most cost is the cost of uh, what, we, what we would call being away from the family, being away from, no. the, from the office. Uh, that, that's where the most, because you have to attend these meetings, you have to go to classes, you have to travel a lot. That's that, but but I, I have absolutely no regret. It was a fantastic process, and uh, it gives you a sense of uh, accomplishment that nothing else would. And you have another family member that is probably going to go into dentistry, right, in yes. school right now. My son is a, a D3 in dental school in Buffalo, and I'm very proud of him. Yeah, and that's something to be proud of because not everybody wants to go into their the the, the family profession, uh, if you will. You know, uh, doctor, there's there's so many different things uh, and different firms and different kinds of individuals that are talking about dentistry and, and national firms too. You know, when you, when you see a, for me, when I see something come in, uh, like a, a national firm, I think of it in terms of like Buffalo is known for its hole in the wall restaurants, right. the small restaurants that make it unique. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not the big national firms, you know, you right. can get those anywhere. And I kind of think it must be the same way with dentistry. It's a great comparison. Uh, so the, the movement in dentistry is, is uh, consolidation. So a lot of uh, offices are very corporate right now. We have remained uh, privately owned. It's, it's, uh, it's my uh, private business and uh, we are very proud of it. <clears throat> and it separates us from the rest because the quality of the work is higher. Uh, the attention to detail is, is better. And uh, patients in general are happier because they see the same provider Every time they come, uh, they bond to us, we have a relationship with them, and they feel like family when they come in. How many implant surgeries do you think you've done? We do on average about uh, between 800 and 1,000 implants every year. Really? Yes. 800 and 1,000, and these individuals come back to you so that you can check to make sure everything is going well? Yes, we encourage pa pa patients to do that every uh, four to six months. What to the average viewer right now that is dealing with dentures or has de de dealt with dentures in the past, that has broken teeth, that have had an accident, that have gum disease or whatever it might be, what's their first step? 
very easy just pick up the phone or send us uh, an email from our website and the first step usually is a consultation they come in and they talk to our implant coordinator we um, do either a, a 3d scan that's a cat scan at no charge to the patient or we take a panoramic x-ray again at no charge to the patient and they uh, get to sit down and talk with implant coordinator and me sometimes that consultation lasts uh, for an hour or, or longer and uh, we spend all the time with them to pretty much explain all their options go over um, uh, what the process would be to do the treatment and they leave with a uh, with a very good knowledge and understanding of what to expect but that that's their first step right and then uh, usually after the initial consultation we schedule what's called a records appointment that's when they come in and we take photographs we take digital scans of their mouth of their face all that gets digitized in the computer and then we use that to uh, build up their digital sort of a case uh, virtually and then that goes into surgery and this is an evolving process that you're doing, right? The teeth now process isn't just something that's stoic. It's fluid, right? No, absolutely. So the teeth now process uh, uh, means that they get their permanent, meaning non-removable teeth, within 24 hours of a surgery. Then they go through the healing, and then they get their final or permanent appliance, usually about five months after the initial procedure. But they have fixed teeth throughout the entire time. So the process is evolving. Uh, there's constantly updates on digital technology out there, and we are right at the cutting edge of uh, all new and digital technologies out there. So we incorporate them into our process constantly. The other thing I have to say that is very impressive to me, not only you know all the certifications that you have, but when I look you up online, to see the positive testimonials from people, even down to the fact of saying that you're very affable, you're very nice, you're, you know, you're a great guy. You know, I mean, when they talk about these things, it's more than just what you do professionally, it's how you treat them personally. Thank you, Joe. It's, it's really humbling to see uh, how many of our patients, uh, you know, say good things about us. And uh, we work hard, it's not just me, it's the entire office, my entire team. So all my assistants and hygienists and office staff, we all work towards the same goal and that is to make the patients happy. And if people are told uh, they're not a candidate for implants, uh, you can tell them maybe differently that they may still be a candidate, correct? Absolutely. So there's still a small percentage that may not qualify, but most of the time we say, uh, yes, you are a candidate. Well, that's great. I mean, I think to, to me, it sounds like it's a simplified process. Uh, it, it is something when I hear implants, kind of scares me a little bit, but your process seems to be something that I would be agreeable to. So I think that it's something that you've done very well, and I compliment you on that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. For more information and answers to your questions, contact Dentistry by Dr. Kaplansky by calling 716-772-7500 or go to drkaplansky.com. Promotional and sponsorship consideration provided by the following. I'm Joe Chilling. You can listen to me mornings on The Big Weck. Joining us today on The Big Weck, Buffalo on the Rise, is Elizabeth Carey. Elizabeth is Director of Public Relations for AAA of Western New York. Yeah, thanks for having me. Elizabeth, it's nice to see you as always. You're a, I'm the novice here. You're the TV person. You know, <laughs> more than you? 20 years in TV, 20 years right? In TV. Yeah. I tell people I still get my TV fix with this AAA job. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. So, you know, I can't even get used to this thing, you know. They put on TV makeup, and I feel like I can't even move. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so you also do a show, uh, a AAA uh, show on WEC on Saturday. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, it's called Talking AAA, and it was actually used to be called uh, AAA Talking Travel, and we changed it during the pandemic when a lot of people couldn't travel a lot of places. But now uh, travel has rebounded. It's uh, bigger and better than it was before the pandemic. So um, now we're just talking AAA and we talk all things AAA from road service, insurance, travel, driver training, traffic safety, you name it. You know, I see uh, uh, vehicles out there that are helping individuals now. Uh, is that is that part of AAA? I mean, I see some of the vehicles have AAA, you know, listed on them and, and, and they have lights, you know, lit up so that people see you and it's 
it's yeah, very, very helpful. I mean, it's comforting to see that people are out there to help. Yeah, you know, they're there 24-7, 365. So we have our own AAA fleet trucks that are out and about, but then we also have a contractor network that we rely on. So it might be a garage name with that AAA logo. So they're a contractor for us, and we rely on them to make sure we can always help people when they're in need. All right, let's talk to you something about maybe a little more pleasant. <laughs> uh, we just had a, a big whack trip that you were on. That's was right. Brian on that trip with you too? Yes, yes, Brian and I hosted it and we had a tour manager from AAA there in case anything went wrong or anyone needed anything. But yeah, but it was the AAA WEC listener trip, the inaugural one, because we were gonna do this in 2020 and we all know what happened in 2020. Yeah. We had all these people signed up and then we couldn't cruise. So it took a while to get it all planned again. And so we cruised uh, from the port of New Jersey, which is right across from the Statue of Liberty, uh, down to Bermuda. Really? Yeah. So how many days? So it was uh, five days, and so you're there. You didn't have to take a plane or anything like that, a no-flight cruise, so you didn't have to deal with TSA or any flight delays or anything like that. We had two motor coaches go. We had about 100 people, um, so we just drive straight to the port. Next thing you know, you're hopping on a cruise ship, and you're good to go. <laughs> you know, I, I've never been on a cruise myself, but I, I understand that one of the biggest things is the food, and it's really just like everything you want, right? I mean, it's, it's just like... Uh, well, you can tell me better than, you know, I, painting the picture, I suppose. Okay, well, they say the camera adds 10 pounds, the cruise adds about <laughs> 20. <laughs> so bear with me here. I got to get the workout going again. <laughs> the food is nonstop. Okay, you have the buffets that are open all the time. There's a pizzeria that's open to like 2 o'clock in the morning. You have the fine dining uh, in the main dining room where they're waiting on you like you're, you know, getting red carpet royal treatment. And then there's also uh, specialty restaurants on board, too, if you choose. Those cost extra if you choose to go try that out. Um, now that's even better fine dining. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have room service, too? Yeah, they have room service. You can bring it right to your room. You never even have to leave if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, this would be terrible for me. Uh, you know, but you look great coming back from the trip. You did very well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, tell us about the, the 2024 trip. So the 2024 WEC listener trip is going to be a cruise again. Um, it's a no-fly cruise, but this time we're going to go up to Boston, spend a night in Boston, and then we're going to sail out uh, to New England and also Canada. So places like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Portland, Maine. So it's at the end of uh, September 2024, and we're hoping that we catch great weather and beautiful fall foliage. Is it geared to a special group of people, or can anybody attend this trip or what? Anyone can do it. Anyone can attend. On the last trip, we had uh, couples. We had families. We had, uh, you know, girls night out with a few ladies traveling together. We had a brother and a sister on the trip. So it's really for anyone. And what it is is... Um, you know, you want to go on a group trip, you don't want to have to deal with, you know, the airplane and all that, and you have a tour guide with you in case anything does go wrong. There's a lot of benefits to that. Have you ever thought about a singles cruise? <laughs> well, we do have, <laughs> we have a solo travelers club, and everyone's like, well, what's the solo travelers club? It's really about uh, travelers who don't have a significant other who wants to travel with them, but we have had some budding romances through the AAA Solo Travelers Club, I'm just going to say. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what makes cruising so enjoyable? What stands out in your mind about these cruises? Okay, you're just on the ship, and you're looking out, and you're just seeing these, like, vast ocean out there like it's unbelievable like you're sailing through the Atlantic Ocean like how much ocean is out there it's just such a beautiful sight to wake up in the morning I couldn't stop shooting videos and everyone knows I love to shoot videos it is but I'm out there every day same shot different sun different clouds beautiful ocean so many colors of blue and you're just looking out at it but at the same time you got enough scenery, you go inside, you have entertainment, casinos, shopping, uh, like all the dining we talked about, the pool, entertainment by the pool. It's just nonstop action. So you can do whatever you want. You want to relax or you want to go crazy? It's up to you. <laughs> and uh, what do we have coming up uh, for, on Talking AAA on WEC? Uh, so we have a show coming up. We're going to be talking about holiday travel, of course. Uh, a lot of people expected to travel for Thanksgiving and the year-end holidays. Of course, we want to talk to people about winter driving skills. You know, we've had a taste of winter. Uh, we know we're going to get more of it, so we want to remind people about traffic safety and all that, too. So those are some of the topics we'll be covering. And what do you think of the big travel places right now? What stands out in your mind? So domestic travel is still extremely popular. So that was the first segment of travel to come back after the pandemic where people were saying, I want to travel within the United States. But 
what slowly recovered was the international travel. So that's what we're seeing right now. Places like London, even before the Bills were playing there, London was one of the top destinations over the summer. Uh, and then uh, people still loving to go to Italy, Ireland, uh, Iceland, the three eyes. Those are really popular. A lot of people looking for next summer for Alaskan cruises and also Greece, really popular too. What was your favorite place? What do you think was your favorite? I didn't get to any of them, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what's really popular too, Mexico and the Caribbean. So it's really up to each individual traveler. It's like a personal choice. Where do you want to go? What's on your travel bucket list? Uh, you know, what fits with your lifestyle? And we're seeing people saying, you know, uh, you only live once, that YOLO approach since the pandemic. People are taking these trips and they're looking to get out and about and, and really make those memories. Elizabeth Carey from AAA, we appreciate it. Thank you. For more information and answers to your questions, contact AAA of Western and Central New York by calling 800-AAA-HELP. That's 800-AAA-HELP or go to AAA.com. Sponsorship and promotional consideration for the preceding segment was brought to you by the following. I'm Joe Chilly. You can listen to me mornings on the Big Weck. Joining us today in the Big Weck's Buffalo on the Rise is Tom Lonzi, who owns Tom's Pro Bike. Tom, welcome. Thank you, Joe. Good you're one of my you. favorite people to talk to. Good to see you again. I know you're a bike rider, so I we, we uh, get rider. along. And, and you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I see everywhere I look now, I, I can't go without seeing some sort of an ad for an e-bike. I mean, they've really come of their own, I guess. They have exploded, yes. And people are using them for transportation as well, right? Uh, using transportation, recreation, um, just to go have fun. Um, commuting is actually a, a big thing now. People, especially with the price of gas, would rather ride to work and not have to pay for parking, save on the gas, and, uh, and get some exercise. Well, before we get into this, you know, let's make something clear with the, with four individuals. An e-bike, yeah, you know, isn't just meant to get on a ride like a motorcycle, right? No, it's definitely not. Um, you know, an e-bike, there's three designations, and there's a class one, which is pedal assist up to 20 miles an hour. Okay. There's a class two, which is throttle, which is supposed to limit at 20 miles an hour. And then there's a class three, which is pedal assist that'll go up to 28 miles an hour. They limit it at 28 miles an hour because anything over that, you would need to have it registered with the motor vehicles. You would need to have a motorcycle license. Um, so that's why it's limited at 28 miles an hour. And is there a governor on these things? I mean, you know, people, so, you know, you don't want to have people tinkering with them to see if they can, you know, soup them up. Right. Um, well, they do sometimes, but what we find is um, on our bikes at 20 miles an hour, if, if, if it's a class one, the motor shuts off. If it's a class three at 28 miles an hour, the motor shuts off. So, you know, if you can pedal it over 28 miles an hour on your own power, then then Go you're ahead. like riding a regular bike. But um, some of the bikes, especially, um, you know, from the east, um, they exceed the 20 mile an hour um, with the throttle. Um, but I see them out there and they're, they're, they're not legal. So I guess the way that you should kind of look at this, if you want an e-bike, for exercise is to think of it as e-assist, as, as opposed to just yes. an electric quote-unquote bike, right? Right, otherwise it'd be like an electric motorcycle, yeah. So to get exercise, it's pedal assist. You have to pedal it to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not gonna go by itself. And a lot of people that I've talked to say, oh, why would I want that if I wanna get exercise? But you can truly get great exercise with pedal assist. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to get up that hill, or to go a little faster, or to go a little bit farther. And there are different levels, right? Like my my uh, my bike has level one, two, and three. Yeah. I think at level one, maybe I can go 10 miles an hour, you know, in, in assist. Right. And level two, you know, I can do 15 miles an hour. Level three, I can go up to 20 miles an hour, whatever the case yes. may be. Yeah. You know, and again, you know, you have to pedal to do this. You're not just, you know, riding around and, you know, I mean, at least with my bike. And, and I think that, you know, that's important too. So where are you located and how long have you been in business? Okay, um, our headquarters is in Lancaster, New York, 3687 Walden. We have another store in Orchard Park on Orchard Park Road uh, by Five Corners. And then we have uh, another store in Victor, New York, um, across from the East View Mall. Uh, I've been in the bike business 49 years and we've been in Lancaster for 27 years. And 
is this the biggest change when you start talking about bikes now and we're talking about e-bikes? Is this the biggest change you've seen in bicycling in the time you've done this? Absolutely. I started in the bike industry in 1974 and any change would be well, maybe they added another gear to the bikes. Um, but when the e-bikes came out and we started selling about 12, 13 years ago, um, we probably sold three or four e-bikes that year. Now they're almost 50% of our business. And the beautiful thing about it is it has allowed so many riders to continue to ride and it brought new riders in that otherwise wouldn't be interested in riding. And do you sell regular bikes as well? Absolutely. And do you service bikes? Yes, we service all types of bikes. Um, you know, from, you know, tri bikes, uh, road bikes, mountain bikes, pretty much everything. Recumbents? Yes. Yep. Yeah. The thing that makes me nervous, I rode a recumbent for about a year is because yep. they're so low to the ground. Right. And I know you have that big whip on the back with a flag yep. on it. Unless I'm with a group of people, I get nervous that drivers can't see me. And I don't know with the distracted driving out there. Sometimes it makes me nervous as to whether they're even looking for me. Yeah. let alone seeing me, yeah. right? I'd agree 100%. Um, I know as a rider myself that uh, a lot of times um, drivers just don't see you, and when you lower that a couple more feet, um, it just makes it almost impossible to see them. So um, we're not big fans of recumbents, and sometimes I'll ask recumbent riders, why do you ride a recumbent? And they're like, well, I can't get comfortable on a regular bike. My answer to that is um, to have your bike fit to you and we offer bike fitting services where we, you know, it's kind of like having a custom made suit. We mm -hmm. kind of fine tune the bike to your proportions. That's great. You know, I mean, I think that, and I can understand that, you know, you have to have a seat that you're comfortable with, you know, too. And the recumbents are kind of like, you know, you're, you're on a lawn chair riding. Right. <laughs> yes. You know, a little bit like that. Is uh, Christmas is coming up. Is this still going to be a busy season for you, or does it? It's going to be a very busy season. Does it? Yeah, we slow down a little bit. Um, actually, right, um, you know, during November, December, we pick up quite a bit with Christmas, and then January and February slows down. Uh, but by beginning of March, um, people are ready for the new bikes, and uh, then our season takes off till basically the end of October. All right, we've got about a minute left in this segment. So, what should people do? People, you know, rather than go out and say, "Okay, I'm going to buy an e-bike." Should, should they come down, see it, try it out? Can they do that at your business? They absolutely can. And one thing I would say is before you buy an e-bike, think about the service. Um, there's a lot of places that sell them. They don't service them. And on all the e-bikes we sell, we can plug them in just like you would an automobile and check the diagnostics. So getting service for your bike is very important. Um, a lot of the, you know, um, less expensive e-bikes, um, they're not serviceable. So mm -hmm. you have a problem with the battery or a problem with the computer on it, and you got to replace it. All right, Tom's Pro Bike. For more information and answers to your question, contact Tom's Pro Bike by calling 716-651-9995 or go to tomsprobike.com. Sponsorship and promotional consideration for the preceding segment provided by the following. Thanks for watching this edition of The Big Whack Presents Buffalo on the Rise. For information on this and other shows, go to our website, bigwack.com, and find out how you can participate on the program if you're a hometown business. I'm Joe Chilly. Thanks for watching and listening to The Big Whack, Buffalo's oldie station. Big Whack presents Buffalo on the Rise was sponsored by Dr. Kaplansky Dental Implants. Get new permanent teeth in 24 hours with our exclusive Teeth Now process.